Good morning, good morning, good morning. The joys of technology. Um, so it is the right way around from what we can gather now. So hopefully you guys don't have to twist your necks. So welcome here uh, this morning. Welcome to Breakthrough City Church and welcome to all the friends and family around the world. And, um, um, you know, the lockdown time is really a time where we are missing you guys. And uh, just to say that we love you and uh, we look forward just to uh, just to celebrate this day. Um, yes, it's Resurrection Sunday, but you know, every day is a resurrection life that we live. So uh, we rejoice what Jesus has done and specifically over the Easter time now. And um, just um, as we tune in, thank you as well for comments coming in. So we have some people looking at the comments. I can't see anything at the moment really uh, regarding from where and what. So we're uh, welcome here once again as people are jumping on from all over. Um, just one or two things as well, just to mention that it's been quite interesting to some of the, of the whole media side, uh, what we're busy seeing happening. Um, uh, some amazing testimonies that are actually coming back and uh, I also want to just invite you to uh, the encounter nights we had one live encounter night and we, we didn't really have, know how it's gonna go because uh, the reality is that there were literally two of us there as well as the angelic host of course the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit were with us there even on Wednesday last week we're gonna do it again most probably in this week coming as well but sometimes the challenge is uh, not having physically people standing there but there was just something that opened to me as well in you know in the spirit regarding that is that you know what uh, there's no time and space in the spirit and um you know so just one testimony regarding me in the count tonight and i'll give you a testimony just now as well some exciting things that have been happening um uh, one of the people contacted us um another part of the world and uh, what they're basically just telling us even in the count tonight um, even though you have sit with a static camera like now, but I want to encourage you, even this morning, the presence of God is there with you. Just become aware of His presence because He is alive. And uh, part of the testimony we got even in this week in that uh, the one person contacted us and they actually a medical professional and um, they uh, basically was just sharing with us about the encounter night. They couldn't understand, but... You know, they were saying that, you know, they, they were, actually they were sitting there, you know, listening to, as we were ministering and worshipping and sharing some prophetic things. Uh, in, and what happened was they said that they felt that they, they couldn't understand, did they have enough to eat now or uh, did they, whatever, because they just felt, they felt so like, you know, this almost a, a, a heaviness, not in a negative way, but which they experienced in that. And almost like a, you know, there was this, not the strength in that. And. Um, the, what they realized only after 10 minutes well you know what even there the other side of the world while they're listening and that the presence of God was so thick there that they could they, they actually battled just to uh, move and that just in the presence of God so I want to encourage you there this this morning listening to us or those are going to listen to the recording maybe later again or in the week be expectant even as this word goes out that it will come accomplish that for which it's been sent out for so um, bear with us even with the technical things as well and uh, we trust this is going to go through so uh, let's see if we can get this message out there and see the kingdom of God established and affecting people's lives so we are trusting as well even you might be sick or you might be sitting there and you need in really just a breakthrough well this is a moment as well just to agree with what heaven is saying so when the word comes to you this morning just agree with that word agree with that word because the tomb is empty and we celebrate that this morning so i wanted to share a word with you and i'll give you some more testimony in a short while so um, um this morning i really want to speak about the resurrection uh the resurrection uh life the resurrection power of god and um you there's a few scriptures i'm going to share with you this morning one of them are in matthew 28 so you can start turning to Matthew, the book of matthew chapter 28 and um Last week I touched on something and I said to you that, um, especially in the time of quarantine, um, there's a lot of hopeless people and people that are feeling hopeless. And this morning I want to encourage you, you don't have to be uh, feel hopeless. And uh, what I said that um, uh, hope or hopelessness is contagious. 
and uh, let's rather choose hope um, because there's a lot of hopelessness and it is more contagious than coronavirus and the world needs hope and his name is Jesus. So uh, this morning I wanted to share with you um, just this life and this hope and this message of, of, of hope. And, and the thing about the, the, the biblical meaning actually of hope is really joyful anticipation or expectation of God's goodness. So uh, uh, um, there's this joyful expectation of good. So when you have hope, you expect to see the goodness of God in your life. And uh, there's a thing that um, uh, um, Steve Backlund normally use, says a lot in that. And he says basically any area of your life which you have lost hope or you're hopeless, you're feeling hopeless in, is under the influence of a lie. So whatever area, every, whatever situation where you feel hopeless in, don't agree with that lie in your life. So this morning I want to share with you, we can have a look in uh, Matthew 28. And Matthew 28 verse 1 and 2. It says the following now after the sabbath as the dawn uh, sorry now after the sabbath as the first day of the week began to dawn mary magdalene and the other mary came to see the tomb and behold there was a great earthquake for an angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it now, it was quite interesting. Um, my wife this morning said to me, because um, around about 7 o'clock this morning here in South Africa, um, we still have that, and uh, like a lot of places in Europe, and I know especially in Switzerland, there's a lot like that, but you hear often church bells. And there were church bells started to ring at 7 a.m. in our area. And uh, my wife said to me, actually, you know, what she heard just before that was this, this thundering that took place. Now, we've had a lot of interesting weather the most rain I've seen here, and I've been here probably about 33 years in this region of South Africa, but uh, the most rain after years of drought. So there's an outpouring that I believe is coming, but there's a thundering. And you know what we said, um, uh, I shared even on the encounter night, look for different signs and wonders that are going to start appearing and people will start seeing, seeing and experience because the sign and the wonders always point to Jesus. It always points to him. It's a sign to him. That's why when we preach the word, there are signs and wonders because it always points to Jesus. And this morning, some of you will be experiencing and encountering that in a special way. That is my expectation this morning. So yeah, we see in uh, Matthew 28, we see that uh, the tomb is empty. And an interesting thing there is that the angel sat on the door. Now, um, uh, that's quite interesting if you picture that. When an angel sits down, something is being completed. So God sends his angels on assignment. But here we see the angel rolls the door actually away and uh, he sits on the stone door. And um, the thing is, what we also need to know is that the throne of God is established on top of every obstacle that you and I need a miracle for. The throne of God is seated above every situation that you and I are facing right now, that you and I need a miracle for. You know, Jesus said it's finished. There's a complete work that Jesus did. So, the thing is this, is that the stone was rolled away, and the reason why the stone was rolled away was not to let Jesus out. I don't know if you realize this. Jesus, um, even if you have a look in the book of John, Jesus walked through the wall. So, um, the stone is not the problem. Jesus didn't have to have the stone moved away to walk through. He could have walked through the wall, through the stone door. But the reason why we actually see that the, the tomb was opened, and the main reason for this is, is, was, was, was really not to let God out, but it was actually to allow observers to see inside that the tomb is empty. And this morning, I want to tell you, the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. And we've been given insight to see what Jesus did. Whatever your situation is, it is not being held down anymore. The miracle is there. Jesus is sitting above every situation that you and I face. Do you know that 
when Jesus was crucified, the Bible speaks about how the veil was torn. It was torn from the top to the bottom. You see, the thing is, when the veil was torn, God stepped out of the old covenant because we live and he, in a new covenant, because he fulfilled the old covenant and he stepped out. And Jesus gave us a message that, you know, the message that Jesus gave us is that he's willing to back us up. He's willing to back up that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is not just an empty message. It is an empty tomb with a fulfilled message. Amen. So, guess what? If Jesus stepped out and he's actually stating, you know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is he saying? He's basically saying it is within reach. It is within reach. Whatever your situation is, it is now within reach. Because the resurrection power of God is available for every situation. And uh, we had an amazing testimony this week. I'm going to give it to you in a second. So I'm quite excited about it. Some of you would have heard about it. And uh, the person actually that the testimony is about, you might be even watching now as well. But the thing about the kingdom of God, it can be experienced. You see, this is a gospel that is not a powerless gospel because that's religion. Religion is a form of godliness that lacks the power. And the thing is about the kingdom of God, when we agree with it, what starts to happen is that we start to experience it, all right? And this is what I spoke about the uh, uh, encounter night as well. When we agree with, with what, what is at hand, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and we can experience the things of the age to come now. So when people boldly uh, declared, when they were declaring what God was doing, what did it do? It, it actually attracted God into the impossibility so when we start declaring what god is and what he what he wants to do we attract god into the impossibility in our situation in our life whatever that might be that you might be facing now so here's the angel the angel rolled away uh, the stone and he sits on it why did he sit on the stone the stone door why because it's finished it's finished it is not what you and i need to do it's what he already did and this is the hope that we have. This is the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Now I want us just to have a look at that. If you want, you can turn there. But I'm going to just give you a bit of a summary where uh, in Mark chapter 16, it also speaks about the same thing that happened here in uh, Matthew chapter 28. And in Mark 16, in that we see that um, Mary Magdalene uh, comes and she goes to the tomb and she sees... Uh, uh, she sees that the tomb is em empty and there's an encounter as well with the rest. Uh, Christ and what happens she goes and she runs to the disciples and to tell the disciples and the Bible says actually uh, the disciples didn't believe what she said they didn't believe what she said about Jesus Christ Jesus is the living word he's not just the word he's the living word all right just keep that in mind I'll get back to that so she runs and, and, and the next minute she tells them. And then there's another instance that we read here where there's two disciples walking and Jesus starts walking with them. And they don't recognize Jesus. And the next minute what happens is when Jesus is breaking bread, they recognize who Jesus is. And um, they realize it's him. And what they go and do is that they go and they also go and uh, uh, this, uh, tell the other disciples, the other nine disciples that they go and tell and um, what happens is that um, then Jesus comes to the rest of the disciples. And that, well, firstly, they didn't believe the other, the other two disciples either. And what happens, they come and uh, Jesus shows up. Uh, uh, he shows up to these disciples. And what he does, he rebukes them. If you read there, he rebukes them for what? The unbelief, right? So they did not recognize, listen to me carefully. They did not recognize the presence released in their testimony to validate in their heart what was true. You and I have testimonies of what Jesus has done. And when we share the truth, we share in His presence. Alright, I'll get back to that now. So, we don't always understand the word. Okay, Many times we don't understand the word that is brought. But we know the origin by the presence released. 
So I might not always understand something, but many times something shared with me, there's this inner witness, there's an awareness of the presence of God when the, pr- when the truth is shared. So if we become intellectual believers, and many times we, we, there's this area of our lives, or, or there might be people in that, where there's, there's intellectual believers, uh, uh, what happens is that we, 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 we live from intellectually believing in God instead of experiencing um, experiencing the presence of God. Uh, and this is the thing is that we miss the life when we don't experience the presence of God. You see, the Word of God is not alive unless the Spirit of God makes it alive. And some of us are more in love with the letter of the Word than the author of the letter because the Word becomes life in you and me. The Bible says this, and last week I touched on this, and, and I actually ended off a bit with this, where the Word became flesh, John chapter 1. The Word became flesh, Jesus, and He walked amongst us. But when Jesus spoke, He spoke words of life. When He spoke, it was Spirit that He released. You see, when we share the Word that is alive in us, we share, share in the presence of God. It is not just letter, it is life. In John chapter 6, um, he has a similar example. John chapter 6, we know the story where Jesus says that uh, if you don't eat of my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. That's what he says there. And what we see is that we see the thousands of people disappear. And the disciples, some of the disciples are still left there. And the context of was, was this, was that Jesus says, my words are actually life and spirit. So are we going to eat his flesh? Are we going to drink his blood? He's, what he's saying is, my, well, my words are life and spirit. Partake of this. Partake of me. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, what he was saying is that what I just said was presence. And, what, and that presence brings life. And this morning as I share this word, may the word manifest and become flesh in you. May you partake of this word. It cannot just be intellectual information. It, it carries presence. And I know even as I'm sharing I'm aware of the presence of God. And may you just experience the waves of His presence touching you. Because these are words that I speak are words of life. It is spirit words. Receive the word of God. Receive the life this morning. Yeah, the disciples um, in this situation, they actually were required to experience of another person, right? So, you see, sometimes your, your entrance into your personal breakthrough comes through an experience from another person. So, sometimes someone is sharing something, what they've experienced of God, that testimony is alive. It has power. It has the same effect for you. You see, the Word of God is alive. It has power to give life to you and me because it is spirit and life. It, there is, it is not just letter. The Word of God, there is spirit and life. And receive that this morning. So Jesus, what He's doing is emphasizing that we are a body uh, and we are members of one another. And if, if, if He only deals with me and it's only about me and I experience God alone, what happens? I become independent and it's only about me. And, and I need the body. You and I need the body. So this quarantine time is like quite sometimes not so good because we can't interact and experience this life. So now we're doing it on a medium where we speak in and there's certain waves going out and, and signal going out. But experience the Spirit of God this morning. Um, I want to really say for people that you might experience physical uh, such ailments and that, that God would want to touch you this morning. That hope is coming because the work is, it is finished. The tomb is empty. You and I can look inside. We can gaze into, into the past and we can see the tomb is empty. It is written. But do you, and I, do you and I believe that? Because God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He lives outside of time. If we have a look, if you want to turn with me to the book of John chapter 11. I want us just to have a look at the book of John chapter heaven. Uh, cha- yeah, chapter heaven as well. It's like heaven. So John Chapter 11, John chapter 11, if you can turn with me there, John chapter 11, are you there? John chapter 11, the book of John chapter 11. I want us just to have a look here, um, and this is just another thing I want to come into. 
because a lot of us might be in certain situations and there might be some challenges ahead as well. And um, in John chapter 11 verse 1 it says the following here. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And, <coughs> excuse me, and we see that, um, we, we see uh, that, that we know the story about, about uh, uh, um, Lazarus and we know that basically he, he was sick and then he died. Now listen to this here in verse 6, Mark, uh, sorry, John 11 verse 6, it says here. So when he heard that he, that he was sick, that's Lazarus, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. How would you like that? Well, <clears throat> some of us might be offended that Jesus is taking longer than what we think. And there might be situations now, right now, that you might feel, but Lord, you know, there's this urgency. I, 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 you know, I need you to move in the situation. You see, when you feel things are urgent, it is not how God operates. God doesn't operate according to urgency. He operates in His time. Because urgency is not urgent for God. So, Jesus goes and He stays two more days. Um, and then He says here, he, he says here that by waiting longer, He actually said it was for the glory of the Father. And the glory of the Father is why Jesus came to earth. So, Sometimes our situations, we don't realize there's actually a testimony where God is glorified. He doesn't give sickness. He doesn't give pain. But God knows when to act in our situation, even though we might seem this is it. I mean, how many of us have been in that time of urgency and we feel, Lord, what's happening? So for some of us, he's waiting two more days. And you might feel this morning that, that you're busy waiting. But God is not moved by urgency. In verse 14 and 15, in John 11, 14 and 15, it says, Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Verse 15, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Alright, so some of us might have been offended, but um, you see, when God delays an answer, it is because He's bringing us into greater faith. So when we have delayed answers, actually what God is doing is bringing us into greater faith. You see, when you and I got, got saved, when you and I gave our lives to Jesus, we got born again. Um, I remember there was times I would, I would just literally ask God about this, and immediately I would have a scripture or a verse that comes to immediately. So, um, and you know, this is the thing when you first get saved. It's like, it's like, oh, oh, everything's just so easy. The thing is, the more that you and I mature, the more in, that you and I grow in Christ, we're expected to act like sons and daughters. And a son and daughter does not have to ask their father and mother, can I take something out the fridge? Can I do this? Can I do that? Are you with me? So, we see that, uh, um, that for some of us, you know, he's waiting and uh, that's not always comfortable. But uh, delayed answers are actually what delayed answers are doing. They, they're collecting compound interest in heaven, if you hear what I'm saying. So, delayed answers is building something up. It's like when you push against a wall, when you push against something and you continue pushing. And then even though that thing is not moving, you might not feel it's moving. The time that you move away, you know you've worked something in your body. It's almost like planking, or some of those have ever attempted it. That you feel it afterwards. And this sometimes the resistance actually many times brings you strength. So some of you might be experiencing resistance in whatever area, but there's a strengthening that's coming in our lives in this time. So delayed answers are really collecting compound interest in our lives. Now verse 23 of, uh, in John 11, 23 and 24. Verse 23 and 24 of John 11, it says, um, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And, you know, Martha basically, uh, she thought she was actually going through a good theological test here. 
say, no, 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 I know it'll rise again, you know, on the last day and that, you know, and so she, she thought she was doing this theological test. She wasn't doing that because verse 25 says the following, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Amen. Do you know what Jesus just said here? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He did not say, um, I will be the resurrection and the life. Do you, you realize that he was still walking? This is in a time when Jesus was hadn't died yet and been resurrected. He was still walking with them before the cross here. And this is what he says. So he is the resurrection. He didn't, uh, what happens when you, you kill the one who is the resurrection? You can't kill the one who is the resurrection because he is the resurrection. Are you with me? He is a resurrected life. He is the one who gives life to us. So verse 26 says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? You would see the glory of God. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. And this is the thing. This is from the start what I started to speak about. They, the, the disciples did not believe the testimony of truth. And where there is life and truth, there is presence. And when there is that truth and life and presence, what happens? Our belief rises up. Because we will always have circumstances. We will always have facts. And that just, let me just take a step back and we'll get back to, you can just start turning to John chapter 20. But I want to give you a testimony even regarding this. Um, so there's a, a wonderful a guy that we've got to know the last uh, couple of years, and especially the last couple of months. Uh, we met him uh, probably about a year and a half ago. Uh, it was a wonderful couple that, couple that came to visit our congregation. And uh, they visited once or twice. And that, and, uh, but anyway, this person came in and they were helping us actually with, with helping to build a walkway for wheel, wheelchairs. Because we want the people to go up in a wheelchair and walk out. That's what I've said. So um, they've been helping us. And they've been the project manager. And we've got to know this person. His name is Brahm. And we're very thankful and honored just to have this guy journey with us and just to assist us. And, they're not a member in our congregation, but they said, but they feel close to their hearts. They want to be involved in this in this project. And what happened was, um, we we've been taking time as a congregation on Saturdays just to help uh, work on this project and build this walkway. And uh, what happened a couple of weeks ago? I'm not sure. It's about two and a half now, two and a half, three weeks or so. Um, he. Uh, um, we, had, we were supposed to work the next Saturday, and I got a message in that week to say, you know, um, listen, uh, you know, Shaul, listen, please, sorry, I can't make it in that the Sunday, uh, the Saturday. And what happened was, um, he said he had this sudden pain in his neck, and he's like two lumps in his neck, and he went to the doctor, I think it was the Monday, and the doctor said, listen, we need to operate immediately. And uh, anyway, they operated, long story short, this was the Thursday now. And this had to happen the Monday, I think, and... Um, as he was, um, but the feedback that he gave to me is that what they had then done is that they had found and they went and diagnosed what they diagnosed and confirmed as a diagnosis is that he had cancer. And the, if I remember the name correctly, it's I think it's called funicular lymphoma. And um, and from what I've also heard from other medical doctors, that is actually quite aggressive and fast spreading, and it's more of a blood disease, uh, blood cancer. And it affects the white platelets of your blood. And um, what happened was, um, Bram just spoke to me and, and he was messaging. And I said, listen, you know, Bram, we want to stand with you. Um, because part of the back story was that um, he had been in an accident, accident, a car accident in 2016. Um, I've actually seen some of the x-rays of pins in his legs, his hips, his arm. Just from this accident, he was in a wheelchair for a time as well. And that's why it was close to his heart, even to help with this project. Because he know what it, knows what it's like to be in a wheelchair. And so what happened was, um, he then told me, uh, you know, he just uh, said, look, would you stand with us? And, and, and I mean, I mean, this is traumatic. His wife had gone, had cancer, I think it was in uh, 2017. 
um, and uh, she had had treatment and I'm thankful for all the medical doctors because it's a gift of God I believe in the medical practitioners and what happened was she uh, she recovered from that as well so now it's the car accident she had cancer the next minute he has cancer they got two children at school and I thought absolutely this cannot be this cannot be this we, we draw a line in the sand and we take a stand in Jesus name and this is the thing about the body of Christ we need one another we can't do this journey alone and what happened is um, uh, this is literally in the last two and a half, three weeks. And uh, um, he then went for tests now, this Thursday. Uh, this Thursday. This is now Easter weekend, a resurrection happening. And uh, 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 he goes on Thursday and um, he goes for CT scan. He goes for blood tests. He go, go, goes for blood marrow. Uh, they also had to check in that uh, uh, bone marrow, sorry, and uh, which was very painful. And then what he did was... Um, we got a report, um, and he gave a report sent back, and I actually seen the document from the doctors, and uh, since then we actually posted uh, a, a video clip of him, his testimony. But I, I'm taking time just to share with you because you see, God is alive; He's resurrected, and um, from something that was diagnosed and confirmed as cancer in the last few weeks, a total report showing he's completely clean. There's no cancer in his body. The reason why they did all these other tests was not to check is there still cancer. The reason why they did is to see where it had spread to in his body with the CT scans, etc. So I want to give all glory to God and, and I rejoice like you rejoice if maybe that's how listening now. Because Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty. We can see inside. It is empty. And that is why we saw Mary and Martha. That is why the disciples and that, they didn't first believe, but they realized that the word is alive. It is not just a letter. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Whatever your situation is now. And there's a line being drawn in the sand. And Jesus, when he says it is finished, it is finished. He took sin upon himself. Through his blood, we have been cleansed. But he's also taken uh, through his stripes. What we see is that through his, we've been healed. And, and he, there is healing for you and me. And I want to just continue. So we, we are so thoroughly just celebrating, especially Easter weekend. And uh, about, you know what? He's alive. He's not held in the grave. Jesus is alive. So I want us just to have a look at John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And uh, just on that, I want to say there's a lot of people who are praying for Brahm in South Africa uh, from our congregation. Even other parts of the world who are praying uh, because we believe that in the truth, the word is alive. His name is Jesus. So John chapter 20, if you want to turn with me, John chapter 20, verse 13 and 31. John 20, verse 13 and 31. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are, are not written in this book. There's many other things that Jesus did that's not written even in here. But these are written that you may believe. Why is this written in here? Is that you may believe. Alright? These things are written here that you may believe. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God. And that believing you may have life in His name. Alright? So, you and I can have life because we believe. The tomb is empty. He's, he's risen. Alright? Um, there's two main points, even in the book of John, that, that we can see. And the first thing is, John, in the book of John, um, John is revealing firstly the Father. Remember Jesus, I spoke a couple of weeks ago. Jesus came, He came to pay for our sin, wash, uh, to, to pay a price for us. But He also came to reveal the Father. Because you've seen Him, you've seen the Father. And I believe in this time that we now on earth that there's new revelation and understanding of coming of Jesus as, as our Savior. But also our good, amazing Heavenly Father who loves us. So the one was to reveal the Father and the second one was to stir up faith in the Father. That we can have faith in the Father. So faith is our heart's response to Him being who He claims to be. Alright? So faith is a response to Him being who he claims to be. That's what faith is. Because if we don't believe who he claims to be, we cannot have faith. If we don't believe that Jesus paid for our sin, but he also paid for our sickness, then we can't have faith. Alright. So, faith is responding to who he is. So, in this time, God wants us to ignite our faith. 
Um, a lot of us are going through a lot of things and we feel, you know, we, we just can't believe. But Jesus says, that you may believe. So these words and this what you hear this morning, that you may believe. Because we serve a perfect Father. God is our perfect Father. And Jesus comes and He announces of God and um, is available to all areas of our lives. All areas of our life, God is available. And this is what He wants us. He announces this on earth and this is what He wants us to understand. So maybe you're sitting there at the moment and you're sitting with a wound in your life. Maybe you've gone through a failed marriage. Maybe there's sickness in your life. Maybe your business has gone under. Maybe things have gone really bad in that for you and that through, through what you experience even now, the lockdown with the economy. Um, I shared a word even this week. I really believe God is raising up people with creativity in a sense to generate wealth for kingdom purpose. I believe God is going to give us insight how to do these things because He's laid up the wealth and the riches of the world for the righteous, just by the way. So when we have purpose of the king in mind, uh, that is when he's going to give us grace just to access this. So God wants to restore hope to you and me uh, in, in whatever area of your life is broken. And this morning you might be watching, there's an area, maybe you, you're lonely. lonely. Loneliness is an emotional condition, a psychological condition. Because if Jesus is alive, you're never alone. So these are the things I want you to understand. You're not alone. You need a break from the finances right now and that. Well, you know what? Uh, we might feel that we're waiting a, a, a second or third or fourth day. But God never responds to urgency. He responds to the perfect time. He doesn't act quickly. He acts suddenly on our behalf. The resurrection of Jesus was for you and it was for me. You see, the Bible says His resurrection is your resurrection and my resurrection. So God wants this to be an experience. It's got to be an experience. It cannot just be a theology. The Word of God is an experience because how can it be if you unsaved and you don't know Jesus, how can I explain to you then, if I'm unsaved, what it means to be born again? So the kingdom and the life of God is an experience. It's not just a theology, all right? So um, I really believe that God wants this, uh, uh, that we can experience our dreams in a new way. He wants us to experience hope. He wants to us to experience hope in our businesses. He wants us to experience hope in our in the hurts that we have. He wants us to experience these things. You see, He restores the lost things. God restores the lost things. You know, some of us might have lost things in the past. There's things that we lost, the, the enemy stolen things. But you know what? Those things are given back. And it's not always necessary in our time. But we might have gone through loss in that. We might have experienced things. And I'll still speak to you about this. Maybe next week we'll see. But even the life of Job and that. But even when there's loss, I want to tell you something. God, What God restores is more. So you might say, well, I don't have confidence to step into the future because of certain things that happened in the past. Well, I want to say, have confidence because God is alive. The resurrection of life is inside you and me. He restores the lost things. He is the great resurrection. And I really believe this morning, as I'm going to start closing off, I just want to pray as well. But I want to say to you that I really believe... If you're out there and you're listening now on that, I believe the spirit of breakthrough is about available for you and me. We know the story in that of, of David and we know what happened. There was the one battle and uh, uh, what happened when they went to battle. They came back and all the women and the children were taken away by the enemy. And uh, then David inquires of the Lord and he says, Lord, shall I go? After these people, shall I go after them to recover these things? And God said, go. And David recovered all. I want to tell you, that is the spirit of breakthrough. That is the spirit of breakthrough. I want to tell you something right now as I pray. I just want to release that spirit because the words that I speak are also life. They are the words, the life of the resurrected Christ is living inside me as well. So I want to just release this over you in whatever area right now of your life. 
So Father, I just want to release it as we just pray right now. I release your life over every broken dream, over every uh, marriage uh, wound that has been broken. Uh, I, I pray for physical healing right now. If, they, if you physically have an ailment, put your hand on your body in whatever area it might be. Lord, I just want to release your life right now. I release creative miracles right now in Jesus' name. I pray, thank you, Father, for your presence of, of, of like waves just to flood people's lives. That the peace of God, as you released your peace, that Lord Jesus, that, that your peace is just released over people's hearts and minds right now. I pray, Lord, for breakthrough, the spirit of breakthrough, the spirit of hope to come again. The hope of the nations. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are surely the desire of all the nations. And Lord, I just release your presence. I release the spirit of breakthrough right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This resurrection life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.